Driving at Home with Avor's housing economist, Claire Losey. All right, guys, we're here with another Driving at Home with Dr. Claire Losey. Claire, it's been a minute since I've been able to sit with you again, so glad we're back together. Yeah, we're back for another fun episode, hopefully. (laughs) So I think this time we're going to talk a little bit about consumer spending or moreover, what things are costing for consumers right now as an indicator of inflation. What reports came out and what what did you learn about them? So last week on Tuesday and Wednesday, the Consumer Price Index and Producer Price Index for October were released. And the Consumer Price Index was unchanged, i.e. flat, on a month-over-month basis, and it measured 3.2% on a year-over-year basis. So that's very good news for the market. And as folks probably already know by now, stocks rallied in response to the news. Of course, inflation has gradually decelerated right over time. And so just that continued deceleration of inflation was very well received by the market. And in fact, according to the CME Fed Watch tool, most market participants, most investors are anticipating that the Federal Reserve will not hike rates in December. The December meeting is mid-month, so we still have a couple weeks left, but the October inflation numbers were very favorable for a no rate hike cycle. So about really a 100% chance anticipated right now by the market, 100% probability of no rate hike. Meanwhile, on the producer price index front, so we're talking about costs that are being incurred by businesses. And we have to remember that these figures are important because ultimately changes in the costs of goods and services produced by businesses translate into changes in the consumer price index, right? If the input costs for a business change, they are going to ultimately pass on the change in that cost to their consumers. So with respect to the producer price index, it was also essentially flat on a month-over-month basis and decelerated year-over-year. With respect to single-family residential construction, so our particular niche, the change in the cost of construction goods. So herein, we're really talking about construction materials measured a negative 0.9% on a year-over-year basis. So down very slightly, but essentially flat. And a similar story with construction services, i.e. labor, essentially flat, but positive at 1.2% year-over-year. But ultimately, it's still important to remember When we're talking about the input costs for new home construction, these costs are still very much elevated relative to pre-pandemic levels. For example, the cost of construction goods rose about 37% from October of 2019 to this past month. And meanwhile, construction services rose about 29% over the same period. So when you say construction services, are you speaking to the expense of labor specifically? Right. You know, we think about yes. with builders still incurring significant shortages, especially in um, some of the niche trades, as an impact not only of time, because it takes a minute to get a crew out, but also in terms of the actual expense of that labor as compared to pre-pandemic numbers. That's absolutely right. And I think it's important to remember that from an advocacy standpoint, right, as realtors and members of the broader real estate community, that's an area in which we can have impact, right? We can facilitate measures and initiatives that encourage folks to enter the specialized trades, which actually pay very well, perhaps contrary to public perception. So here, and we're talking about welders, electricians, technicians, those sorts of professions. Yeah, that's part of the work, certainly, that I know the Greater Austin Chamber of Commerce takes on, but that we help support through our support of Opportunity Austin, also the economic development arm of the city as a means of saying, we want to invest in the businesses, but we want to invest in the talent that supports those businesses in the future as well. And especially as it relates to housing and the construction industry, we know that we've got a deeper need than we're able to fill right now on the talent side. Exactly. And of course, if we're able to reduce increases in those costs, not necessarily reduce the costs themselves, but reduce the growth in the costs of labor, 
then that will help alleviate some of the constraints that we're facing on our affordability front, particularly with respect to new homes. Yeah, yeah. But largely coming out of both CPI and PPI, positive news and certainly positive as we're looking towards that Fed meeting in December and as compared to our previous projection that there might be a rate hike then. Definitely. Do you expect the markets to continue the rally and continue the positivity this week in response to last week's reporting or does that sort of soften out? And what impact does the holiday have potentially on what happens this week? Oh, that's a great question. I think things will even out a little bit. They won't, there won't be as, as wide fluctuations as we saw last week, just because, of course, this week, moving into the holiday, folks are off for vacation and just in that mindset, so to speak. And there's just not really the release of significant news this week. No really big numbers are coming out over the next couple of days that would otherwise cause those swings in the market. So I think steady goes it will be the theme of the next couple of days. And then we'll see what happens moving into December, especially as we're moving into the end of the year, looking at retail sales and looking at Q4 earnings reports, all of that. Yeah. Yeah. What are we seeing in our market data this week over week? So on a week over week basis, closed sales finished out stronger. They were up about 28%. Of course, you have to remember that folks are probably trying to finalize their sales prior to the holiday and next week, as we can all probably anticipate just with the holidays, closed sales will probably be down. Um, But overall, you know, just essentially flat with respect to the change in active listings And then new listings were down about 16% on the residential sales side. And then with respect to residential leases, active listings were also essentially flat on a week-over-week basis. Closed leases ended up about 35%. Again, we expect, you know, a decline in that number just given the holiday coming up this week, moving into next week. And then new listings were up just very slightly, 2%. Yeah, this past week. certainly not a surprise that we would see a reduction in new listings given the holiday and maybe not the best time to list. <laughs> right. So, right. But that's what we expect. All right, guys, I know both Claire and I wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. We are thankful for you listening to our podcast and listening to these conversations week over week. As always, feel free to leave us comments if you have an idea of what we might cover in the future. And we'll talk to you again next week. Thanks, guys. Take care and happy Thanksgiving. 